Donc, euh, bonjour à tous, euh, ravi de vous accueillir pour ce dernier séminaire de l'année la, de académique. Euh, donc, il n'y en, en, en aura pas de sur le sur reste de juillet et sur août. Euh, donc, donc, toujours un peu de monde, donc ça fait plaisir. Euh, donc, donc, avant ces vacances d'été, ben, ravi de vous accueillir. Donc, je vous rappelle juste le, le fonctionnement rapidement hein, donc, euh, de, de, de ces séminaires hein, où l'idée, c'est de, de présenter divers aspects de, de l'IA. Euh, donc, si vous ne pouvez pas activer vos micros, c'est normal, mais ça sera possible en fin de séminaire. Si vous voulez réagir pendant, euh, pendant le séminaire de Serena, il euh, n'y a vraiment aucun souci. Vous pouvez le faire par le chat. Donc, euh, après, Serena gérera si elle veut... Euh, euh, à, à réagir directement ou euh, si elle préfère si elle préfère attendre la fin euh, donc euh, donc voilà c'était pour l'intro du, du séminaire et euh, et donc euh, ben, aujourd'hui on est très content d'accueillir Serena Villata donc euh, CR sans doute bientôt DR CNRS euh, et sur tout ce qui est argumentation donc là je vais laisser la main à, à, à Nicolas Modet qui sera beaucoup plus pertinent que moi sur, sur tout ce qui est argumentation et qui va donc animer euh, scientifiquement ce séminaire donc Nicolas euh, quand tu veux ouais, bah euh, ouais, merci Sébastien c'est un grand plaisir d'accueillir Serena Villata euh, donc comme tu l'as dit euh, bah, Serena elle travaille sur euh, plein de choses passionnantes euh, autour de en particulier argumentation mining euh, voilà, elle est de l'Université de Nice Côte d'Azur, chercheuse CNRS, elle est aussi euh, responsable scientifique de, de l'Institut euh, euh, d'IA, euh, directrice scientifique ou responsable scientifique, je ne sais plus quel titre euh, exact. Et donc, euh, ben, dans tous ces travaux, il y a une composante argumentative euh, autour, euh, pour partie du raisonnement et aussi de l'extraction euh, d'arguments et d'aller voir comment euh, les... Les vrais arguments peuvent être exploités et ce qu'on peut, qu peut en tirer. Euh, et donc, si je comprends bien le titre aujourd'hui, on, on va voir ce qu'on peut faire, enfin, c'est vrai, là, vous expliquer ce qu'on peut faire à partir de débats politiques, grandes sources d'argumentation, effectivement. Et je pense que quand les gens pensent à de l'argumentation, c'est sans doute le premier exemple qui leur, qui leur vient en tête. Donc, on est, on est très curieux de voir ce que tu vas pouvoir nous, nous raconter. Serena, toi la parole. Merci beaucoup, Nicolas. Merci déjà pour l'invitation. Ça me fait très plaisir d'être là. Alors, euh, je partage mon écran. Voilà. Ok. Alors, euh, je ferai ma présentation en anglais, juste parce qu'il y a pas mal d'exemples euh, des, des débats politiques. Euh, notamment qui nous on a pris à partir des débats politiques aux États-Unis et du coup ce sera plus simple pour ne pas basculer euh, du français à l'anglais euh, et, et vice versa. Uh, okay, so uh, it's my great pleasure to, to, to be here uh, today where we talk to you about uh, uh, argumentative analysis of political debates uh, and uh, and I will uh, let's say First, explain what we have been doing in this uh, in this research area. So, how to analyze automatically the uh, the argumentation, uh, let's say, uh, contained in the in political debates, and and then I will uh, I will move to uh, some uh, let's say uh, challenges because of course we are we are far from uh, having uh, let's say uh, answered all the, the research questions uh, around this uh, uh, this uh, challenging topic. Uh, So the uh, the idea is uh, uh, is the following. As as uh, Nicolas said, when we talk about uh, um, argumentation, one of the let's say standard e examples we we think about uh, are political debates because of course there are a lot of arguments which are which are put forward, uh, and then there are uh, let's say relations between the different arguments. Uh, so you can have uh, uh, that uh, uh, one uh, one candidate, uh, for instance, one politician attacks the argument of another politician uh, or they, they can support each other if maybe they are part of the same party or even not if they are not uh, in the same party and so on. So there is a lot of um, interest in this kind of, uh, of, of, of debates of, of, uh, in this genre of, of text uh, for argumentation. 
uh, in general, what we do is uh, uh, in the context of um, a research area, which uh, now I cannot say anymore uh, with a new research area because now it's almost 10 years that, uh, that uh, we are there with this uh, research uh, around argument, argument or argumentation mining. So the goal of argumentation mining is to, uh, let's say, uh, ever um, try to uh, to extract first first of all uh, and classify uh, argumentative structures from uh, text. Of course, this implies a lot of uh, a lot of issues because uh, it uh, the kind of uh, text that you are analyzing could uh, could change a lot, and so also uh, the the difficulty uh, of of the task uh, change changes. Then we can uh, we can have also uh, the issue of uh, of uh, having uh, different languages which are which are impacted on, uh, on that, uh, and uh, many more uh, issues that I can uh, I will highlight uh, through my, uh, my my talk. So in general, the goal of argumentation mining is to detect and classify these uh, uh, these uh, argumentative structures based on a certain argumentation theory that we choose at the beginning. Uh, so that we know what we are looking for in the text and uh, how we want to, uh, to, to classify, to, uh, to, to, to also to annotate all, all that. And doing that is uh, very important because then what you can have is that you extract the arguments. Let's think that you extract uh, uh, a cl the claim and then you extract also the, the premise, which are, let's say, uh, behind the claim, uh, which support the claim. This is a kind of, a, let's say, the basic argument uh, uh, structure. Uh, and then given all these arguments and also all the relations you can identify among these arguments, meaning that, you know, that a certain claim attacks another claim, or there is a, a claim attacking an evidence of, a, of another argument and so on. Then you can really build what uh, are uh, argumentation graphs. That, that's what we we, uh, we used in a, in a computational models of argument uh, to then reason over these argumentation graphs, for instance, uh, and uh, compute what are the acceptable arguments, what is the justification status over the arguments, and so on. So in a way. Um, when this research area uh, started uh, growing, there was a, uh, a lot of research around um, reasoning on, uh, on uh, argument uh, structure or uh, uh, abstract structure, like in Doom's framework. So where there are uh, that uh, the arguments are the, the just the, the nodes of a graph, and then we have the relations, and also more instantiated ones where we could have claims and and then. There was this, uh, in a way, this brick which was missing, such that uh, so how can we apply these uh, kind of reasoning to real text? And this is what uh, have been uh, have been the objective of this uh, this research area of argumentation mining. <coughs> we started working on that on that on uh, 2012. Uh, why 2012? Well, it was kind of a let's say conjunction of events. On the one hand, there was a um, uh, a huge availability of resources in natural language of text. So user-generated content, uh, in, for instance, uh, on the blogs, forums, and so on, product reviews. But we have also a lot of data in uh, the medical domain, a lot of data in, uh, in the legal domain, and, of course, uh, the data in, the, uh, in this politica, about these political debates, which is more in the, in the context of digital humanities. And on the same time, in 2012, we have also these uh, um, big advances in uh, computational linguistics, in, natu in natural language processing, uh, such that, uh, let's say, the time was, uh, it was the good moment to start working on that. Just a, a quick note on the fact that, actually, argument mining is not opinion mining, okay? So uh, when we talk about opinion mining, we want to look for uh, for instance, if we take the product review as an example, we look for uh, what's the, the, the opinion, so what's the polarity of the opinion of the user with respect to a certain product, meaning that you, you want to, to know whether uh, the, 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 the user liked or not this, uh, this, uh, this product. Whilst for argument mining, what we are interested in 
is to, um, in a way, to know why they liked or why they, they didn't like. So the standard pipeline of uh, argument mining at the beginning, uh, in particular, was to start with the text, as you can see in the, in the picture. Then you detect first what are the argument components, and you classify them. So you have evidence, you have claims. You classify them, meaning that you detect that a certain sentence is uh, argumentative. Then we will go more into the details of how we can define it. And then we say, OK, <coughs> this, this sentence is argumentative. Then uh, how can we know whether it is a claim or an evidence? And that's, that's the second step. Once we have the evidence and the claims, so in a, in a way we have the arguments, we want to connect these arguments because at the end, what we aim to is to have a kind of a graph structure uh, in a way emerging from, what, uh, from the text. So we want to predict the relation. Uh, we started with two relations. That's the easiest, uh, in a way, pattern. Support relation and attack relation, so a binary uh, argumentation framework. Of course, you can go into much more fine-grained relations. You can detect more, uh, also not only more fine-grained, but also uh, diverse relations that you can you can have depending also on the application uh, of on, so on the kind of text you analyze. And then, what's the result? The result is uh, what I wrote here: it's annotated text, which means that basically you have a text. And this text is annotated with, I don't know, this sentence is a claim. And then you have an arrow from this sentence to another sentence saying, OK, this is an attack, for instance, of this claim to another claim. Okay, So basically, it's annotated text. Uh, concretely, it's a kind of an argument uh, of a graph-based structure that you can, uh, you can have. So, um, what what uh, what we did uh, because it was quite natural. We were worked on uh, on text on uh, on social networks, for instance, uh, and then we said, uh, okay, it's very natural to work on political debates. Debates, so let's go. Uh, given that for argument mining, we were still working mainly on uh, on English data. Uh, we we said, okay, we look for the for the political debates in the in the US. And uh, these are available. And, and so what we did is that we analyzed um, the political debates from the last 50 years of the US presidential campaigns. Uh, and we, uh, we did this, uh, this analysis on this, uh, on this data. Uh, our first objective was to detect the, uh, the argument, uh, in a way, uh, the argument components, the relations. But our final objective was to, uh, to identify fallacious arguments, because that's, uh, that was uh, a bit the, the, the interesting part. So saying, OK, we know that this politician, when he says that, he's using kind of, a, let's say, a fallacious argument. It's not a, it's not a wrong argument, not, not all the time, but it's an argument which is, um, which is formulated in a way which is intended to mislead the audience in a way or in, an, in another. So you will see there are also kind of, a, let's say, positive fallacious arguments, but still the, the goal is always to mislead a bit the, the, the audience. So that was a, the, the, the interesting part uh, to us. So first of all, there has been a huge work of um, an, a collection and annotation of the data that has been really uh, a huge, huge work. I always uh, want to, to underline that because um, th this sometimes is uh, the part uh, of, the, of the, let's say, of the presentation, which is a bit, uh, uh, let's say, underestimated, meaning that uh, in a way people say, okay, that's, that's, that's nice, they collected the data. And so let's see what, what's the result they obtained on that. But actually building in a proper way this data set was a, a, a really a core issue. So we, have, uh, we, we took the transcripts of uh, the debates on the TV among the candidates uh, for the presidential and the vice presidential nominations in the US. So 1960, so um, Nixon Kennedy, uh, to 2016, which is uh, Trump uh, Clinton. 
And uh, what we did is that we collected uh, about uh, 30,000 argument components. You see there are uh, a, bit more, uh, a bit more claims than, than premise, uh, which is kind of expected because uh, uh, in political debates, often they, they make a lot of claims, okay? Not, not, they are not always in a way baked by, by, by premises. And then you have relations. Uh, about uh, 25,000 uh, relations. Uh, and you can see here, there are uh, much more, uh, in a way, uh, supports, because <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, supports between the premise and the claims inside the same argument, meaning that the premise which, which support the claim, then these form an argument. And so you have often many of these uh, more than the relations uh, which are usually attacks uh, between the different claims of, or premise from the different contexts. So what, what, what did we do? We, uh, we wrote the, the annotation guidelines. Uh, so three expert annotators uh, did that, uh, wrote the annotation guidelines, uh, makes, a, a, let's say, an attempt to annotate part of the data set, see that uh, the task is very difficult, uh, that the annotation was uh, uh, really, uh, let's say, um, the, the annotation, the internal data agreement was very low. Uh, so we moved again to the annotation guidelines, we specified it, we, uh, we did a, um, a kind of, a, kind of a, let's say, uh, agreement uh, session, uh, cons reconciliation on the, on the, on the, different, uh, on the different labels. Uh, we re-annotate uh, some data that we have never seen and so on, and we, we got a, a kind of acceptable, let's say, uh, inter-annotator agreement. So the inter-annotator agreement is a, a measure you use to compute how much the different annotators agree, such that if some parts of the, of the data set are annotated just by one of them, and then uh, each, each of them takes one part, then we know that they, are, they all share the same, uh, let's say, uh, understanding of the annotation guidelines. So this means that you know that uh, in a way the, the annotation is reliable, the, the annotation is, uh, let's say, in a way uniform over the data set, and so you, you, you know that the system can really learn something from that. It's not a different kind of annotation, different, uh, uh, let's say, notions of uh, um, arguments uh, and so on. So then the Three expert annotators didn't annotate the whole data set that has been annotated by other uh, annotators. Um, and each transcript has been independently annotated by at least the two annotators, so such that, uh, that, that we, 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 uh, we have a kind of, a, let's say, uh, we ensure really that there was an agreement on the, on the annotation. Um, these are the, the, the precise inter-annotator agreement in, uh, in, uh, in Kappa. Um, that we, we obtained. Uh, so uh, some, some of them are, let's say, better, uh, moderate to, to, to fair agreement. The task is very difficult. The task is very difficult uh, even for humans. Uh, and uh, as we will see in a uh, in, in few minutes, uh, there is also the risk of, of uh, injecting some kind of bias for, for, the, for the annotation. So that's, uh, that's, that's a tricky thing. Anyway, that was acceptable. Uh, to release the, the resource. Uh, and then what, uh, uh, what, uh, what we did is that we have this, this, uh, this is the data set that we annotated. Uh, as you can see, there is the year when the, 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 the debate takes place. Uh, then we have the, the type of debate, so two presidential debates, for instance, and one vice presidential debate and so on. Uh, you have the candidates, okay, uh, and you have uh, the, the, the speech turns, the, the, the number of sentences, and the number of tokens that are in uh, for each of these uh, of these debates. These are an, over, an overall view. Uh, and now we have just finished uh, the, the annotation of uh, the, 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 last, uh, the last debate, 2020, uh, and we will release it as well with uh, the rest of, uh, of the data set. So this is uh, an overall view. What, what, um, something which we need to observe since now is that, uh, as you can, uh, as you may wonder, I mean, it, there is a, a certain difference in the kind of, uh, um, in the kind of, uh, let's say, uh, argumentation you can find through the, the debates uh, with, the, uh, with the time changing, okay? Meaning that in the 1960, you have, 
first of all, certain topics, which are uh, the core topics. So, for instance, you have, uh, I don't know, C uh, Cuba or, um, or uh, uh, the, the minimum wage and so on. Whilst for, uh, for, for Bush, for instance, uh, in uh, 1992 and so on, you have uh, Iraq uh, war and so on. And uh, moving on, you have different kind of, uh, of, of issues, for instance, in the last debate uh, of uh, uh, Tim Trump. So you see there is an evolution on the topics, and but there is also an evolution in the kind of argumentation that you can find. That makes, makes also, the, 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 in a way, the task a bit more complex because it's not the date, it's not the kind of, uh, the, the precise same, same kind of argumentation you can find. So here we have some examples. Um, for instance, let's take the second one. Uh, you have a, a claim, the claim are in bold, and in italics you have the, uh, the, the, the evidence, the premise. So here, for instance, you have, I favor, that's, that's the Nixon talking, uh, I favor the present depletion allowance, and then he, he explains why. So I favor it not because I want to make a lot of oil men rich, uh, but because I want to make America rich, and then this is the, simula the stimulation, the incentive for companies to go out and explore for oil, to develop it. So these are all the reasons that are put forward by Nixon to support his claim, I favor the present depression law. And then you have examples of, uh, of, uh, of premises. For instance, we take, the, again, the second one, Clinton-Dole, uh, 1996. And here you have... Um, a number of premises, uh, I will read just some of them to, 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 to let you understand. Wages are going up for the first time in a decade. So we have record numbers of, of new small businesses. We have the biggest drop in the number of people in poverty in 27 years. All the groups of people are growing and so on and so, and so forth. And then you have, so I think it's clear that we are better off than we were four years ago. Okay. So here you have, you have all the evidence, all the, the facts, in a way, sometimes they are facts, okay, uh, that support the, the claim. Um, just a, a quick note on that. We, we never check, in a way, we don't do fact checking, okay? So it means that we don't, uh, in a way, we don't uh, assess the quality of these arguments. We just want to extract the structure of the arguments. So we don't look at if actually there was, a, I, don't know, I don't know, the biggest drop in the number of people in poverty in 27 years. We didn't check that to say, okay, this is an evidence for this, uh, this claim. That, that's not what, uh, what we did. And then the, the tricky part was to detect the relations. So you want to, to you have these, uh, these, these, uh, these arguments the premise, the claims, and then what you want basically is to generate automatically this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, subgraph. So you have uh, the claim, this is not standing still, and you have the different uh, premise, so premise one, premise two, and premise three, uh, supporting these, uh, this claim. And then you have also more complex structures, uh, so premise one and premise two, which supports premise three, which uh, uh, it itself support claim one, this is a formidable force, and this claim actually supports another claim, okay? So these are just very small excerpt from the graphs we generate. So we, we have graphs, first of all, which has also uh, attack relations, okay? So not only support, like, like those uh, you see, and we have huge graphs because the, the I mean, the, the debate uh, take uh, one, two hours. I mean, it's, it's, it's long. So as you can imagine, the number of arguments that are put forward in that, uh, it's, uh, it's huge. So the experimental setting, we have uh, four tasks, which follows in a bit what, what I presented you about argument mining at the beginning. So the argumentative sentence is detection. We want to say this is a, a sentence as argumentative. Then we want to say, this sentence, which is argumentative, is actually a claim or a premise. Then we want to detect, the, predict the relations holding between the different components and say, then, last task, whether the relation is a support or attack. There are a number of features we use. I will not go too much into the details. Anyway, to all the, the, let's say, the computational details, the machine learning ones are, are available on, 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 in our papers. So that's, that's, uh, that's not the, the purpose of this talk, so just to show the, the, the results. So quite acceptable results, okay, for uh, um, the, 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 the binary classification, it's argumentative or non-argumentative, this sentence, quite good. 
Then you see we start, uh, let's say, going down. So you, here we have uh, once uh, uh, we have uh, we we know what are argument, what is argumentative, what is not argumentative. For those that are argumentative, we do another binary classification, claim and premise. This is what we got. So uh, zero sixty uh, uh, seventy four seventy one for for the F score, uh, which is still quite good given the uh, let's say. In general, the results we, we, we obtain for argument mining, but also with respect to the difficulty also of, of the task. And then once we go to the relations, as you can see, uh, I'm not hiding anything. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really much more difficult. So uh, we do the relation, non-relation non classification. So here there is a relation, there is not a relation. Uh, that's, that's, that's very, very, very hard because sometimes the relations are quite far in the, in the text. Uh, and, uh, and and so that's 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 uh, usually the relations we, we miss. Uh, and and also uh, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, anyway it's hard to, to say whether there is a relation or not. Performance are better when you want in a way just to say whether it is a support or an attack because there you know that there is a relation, you have the different components, so you know that uh, there is I don't know an attack from uh, the this claim to this claim. You, you look at the text, you look at the sentences, the argumentative sentences, and it's easier to know whether there is a kind of a negative relation or a positive relation. The difficult part is to, to establish whether there is a relation between uh, two argument components. So a bit of error analysis, uh, well, misclassified non-argumentative sentences. Okay, so for instance, uh, uh, so what should we do? Then this is classified as argumentative because there is the, the so, okay, which is usually an argument, uh, a claim indicator. But of course, this is not, uh, let's say, a, a claim in a way. Um, so that's, that's the problem, claim indicator uttered in a non-argumentative manner. Uh, then we have also uh, final remarks, which are uh, kind of a... Um, uh, in a way, rephrasing uh, what has been done before, what has been said before. So, like in this example, I think uh, when you make the decision, it might be well if you would ask yourself, "Are you better off than uh, you were four years ago?" So, this is uh, this is again not argumentative, but this use parts of what has been said before. And then, of course, uh, the, the 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 misclassification between claim and premise is due to the fact also that the component classification depends on the structure of the argument. So sometimes uh, there are misclassification in the relations, so which depends on the fact that you actually misclassified one of the uh, of the uh, the components, for instance. And out of that, uh, you if you are interested in having a look at the data set and in, in testing our system, there is a demo which is available online, which is called Disputool. In this portal, you, you can analyze the whole data set. Uh, so you can uh, have a look at what are the arguments put forward by you know, Nixon, Kennedy, and so on under formal debate. You can, uh, you can look filter based on data, based on, uh, on the speaker, and so on. And you can also copy and paste your, your, your text and analyze it. Of course, it's not always perfect because as you saw in the results, uh, it's still making some, some errors, but we are improving. So, uh, so far, so good. We say, okay, so now we go for our fallacious arguments. Um, we want to detect these fallacious arguments uh, in, uh, uh, in these political debates. Same, same easy, let's say, as a, as a task, uh, but it was not that easy. So let's have first some example of fallacious arguments so that we can understand what, uh, what it means. So we have Nixon here saying, I would remind Senator Kennedy of the past 50 years I would ask him to name one Republican president who led this nation into war. There were three Democratic presidents who led us into war. I do not mean by that that one party is a war party and the other party is a peace party, but I do say that any statement to the effect that the Republican Party is trigger happy is baited by the record. Okay, so this is a a uh, correlation does causation uh, fallacy, which means that the fact that there has been, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 a president and during the, this, this uh, let's say, presidency there was, there was a war, it doesn't mean that uh, the democratic presidents were in a way uh, looking for uh, these, uh, these, uh, th these wars. So this is uh, the correlation does causation um, uh, fallacy. 
Then we have a, a standard, uh, let's say, well, first of all, the usual suspect. So we have Trump, we have Trump and we have a cl uh, classical uh, fallacy, which is a dominant. That's one uh, of the most popular one in, in political debates. So here, for instance, uh, you have, um, you have the, 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 the discourse of, of Trump. I am a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country. And certainly, I'm not proud of it. But that was something that happened. If you look at Bill Clinton, far worse. Mine are words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. Okay? So uh, this is a, a personal attack to, uh, to actually well, the husband of uh, the, 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 the opponent in the, in the debate, which was, uh, which was Hillary Clinton. Uh, and this is uh, also uh, another, uh, let's say, uh, fallacious, uh, fallacious argument. And then, as, as, I, as I told you at the beginning, there are also kind of, let's say, positive, in a way, uh, fallacies, uh, like the appeal to emotion. So here, for instance, is Kerry uh, saying, I was at a forum with Michael J. Fox the other day in New Hampshire, who's suffering from Parkinson. And he wants us to do stem cell and embryonic stem cell. And this fellow stood up he was, and he was quivering. His whole body was shaking from the nerve disease, the muscular disease that he had. And he said to me and to the whole hall, he said, you know, don't take away my hope because my hope is what keeps me going. Chris Reeve is a friend of mine. Chris Reeve exercises every single day to keep those muscles alive for the day when he believes he can walk again. And I want him to walk again. I think we can save lives. So this is clear that um, the, uh, the, the, the goal, the objective of, of, of Kerry is really to, to, uh, to in a way, to, um, uh, to make a, a statement which, is, which to, to, to have some empathy in, in the, let's say, in the audience for that. So this is a, a, an appeal to emotion. Uh, of course, also in this case, also with this appeal to emotion fallacy, <clears throat> <clears throat> even, if, uh, even if it's not kind of, a, let's say, a personal attack it's in the first one and so on, still there is a, there is a, a, um, a goal of, uh, let's say, in a way, misleading the audience uh, by, uh, let's say, pushing on the, uh, the, the, the emotions so they, they can feel. So we said, okay, very good. We have a data set. We have a data set for, of uh, political debates. We want to identify fallacious arguments. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's very easy. We take our data set, we make an extension, we annotate uh, again this data set, and we annotate another, an, another layer. So we do another annotation layer for fallacious uh, arguments. Uh, well, that was not uh, that, uh, that, that easy as we, as we thought at the beginning. Um, so we, uh, we did, first of all, an exploratory study on the arguments put forward by the candidates. And uh, we, we had a kind of a, let's say, a grow, uh, let's say let's high level annotation just to understand which were uh, also the, the, fa the fallacies, which are uh, more, let's say, occurring more often in this kind of debate, based also on a lot of um, uh, uh, literature in the social sciences. Uh, because, of course, this is not a, a purely uh, let's say, uh, AI uh, computer science uh, approach, because you do need to talk with, uh, for instance, uh, researchers in digital humanities, in political sciences, in cognitive sciences, and so on. So we uh, focus on six types of fallacies. Uh, you can say, okay, six is not, it's not a lot. There are, there, are, uh, there are many fallacies which you can, uh, which you can consider, which is true. Uh, but actually, uh, the, 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 the more fine grade you go into this, into this classification, the more difficult it is the task for the annotation. And you risk to have just a few instances in, annotated in the data set for a single uh, fallacy, which means then that the machine learning system you, you are training on your data will not really learn how to classify these, these fallacies. So it's, it's, it's complex. So, what we, we keep uh, are the following. So a dominant, uh, appeal to emotion. So a dominant is what you, you have seen with, with, uh, with Trump. Appeal to emotion is what we have seen with, with Kerry. Appeal to authority. 
so the fact that this is usually exploiting in a way what we call ethos. So uh, I'm an authority on that. So you, you should trust me. Then you have a slippery slope. A slippery slope is um, very tricky as a, as a fallacy. It means that for a small event that happened, that, that is, is described by the, by the speaker, then it makes these as a, let's say, uh, um, let's say starting cause of a, a, a huge series of, uh, let's say, a serious events, usually negative events that happen. So for just a one small, uh, in a way, uh, uh, let's say one small uh, event, uh, then this, uh, this is uh, seen as the cause of a huge negative uh, event. Then there is a false cause, meaning that you, ask, you, 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 you give the cause uh, of something to, uh, you, you assign it to uh, something which happened, which was not the real, the real cause. Uh, and then we have slogans, which is kind of, let's say, usual, um, uh, so usual, usual uh, let's say, kind of argument uh, you can find in, uh, in, uh, in these political debates, in these political debates. Uh, and then we have uh, th these uh, fallacies are further divided into um, subcategories. So we have also some subcategories, you will see them, uh, but these are much more difficult to be, to be identified. So here there are some statistics and that analysis on our new, newly annotated uh, data set. Uh, the agreement was, uh, was pretty good, okay, uh, in uh, most of the cases. Uh, the most difficult one was uh, the, uh, the appeal to emotions, uh, but still uh, that, that was uh, anyway a fair agreement. And as you, ca you can see on the... Um, uh, on the uh, figure on, on the left, uh, the average annotated fallacies in the different uh, years. That, 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 that's, that's quite interesting to note that in 2016, there has been the, a huge number of uh, the highest uh, number of fallacies uh, proposed. So um, when we first look at these, these examples uh, in, uh, in our preliminary annotation of the data set, we were wondering, and that's, uh, that's something I will spend a few words about, is we were wondering whether we were in a way biased because this is the, uh, this is the debate where Trump was. And uh, in a way, everybody easily uh, make a match between Trump and fallacious argument, okay? So we said, is it, is it possible that maybe we are biased in this annotation? So what we did to kind of um, have some kind of fair annotation is that anyway, to the annotators, which are not uh, really annotated this data, not the expert annotator, which uh, established the guidance, uh, we hide the, uh, the identity of the speaker. Of course, uh, this is uh, uh, a partial solution because of course you, uh, in a way you can identify who's the speaker in the text. Not always, but sometimes you can. And uh, of course, this, uh, uh, this was also to, uh, and, and we mixed the different uh, debates they were analyzing, such that they were analyzing maybe something from uh, 1984 and then something from 2016 and so on. So they were not uh, full into the, let's say, uh, Trump-Clinton debate, for instance. So as you can see, it's quite reasonable, the, the, the balance you, uh, you have. Um, and then here you have on the right, the, the different subcategories we have. Uh, so you have also the to quoque, the appeal to fear, the appeal to pity. Of course, these, are, these all are encompassed under the appeal to emotions, for instance, in our, uh, in our, uh, in our let's say, uh, classification of the big label, the, 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 the general labels, like force authority and so on. So uh, for all these, uh, uh, for all these, we 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 try to 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 establish the, the task. So the task is uh, um, the multi-class classification for fallacies or fallacious arguments. Uh, we, uh, we 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 com we compute as a baseline. Uh, we 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 took two let's say quite challenging baselines. Robert, uh, Bert and Roberta, um, and we used the uh, long former and transformer Excel uh, to, um, to to in a way to to make our uh, our architecture our classification working. Why we uh, we rely on these these ones? Well, these are among the, the latest uh, language models uh, and so on. So that's the, there is a also let's say kind of a technological reason. 
But the, the important thing is that, that, that they, they can t deal with long text. And actually, in these debates, our arguments are long, are very long. So we need to take this into account. So the classifier um, was enhanced then with argumentation-based features. So as I will show you in, in a minute for the results, first we analyze the results just uh, doing a, a multi-class classification on the data set over the, the six uh, classes of fallacies. And then we say that, but, so we're here anyway talking about argumentation, is having the information about this is a claim, this is a claim, this is a relation, this is a tax, this is a support, are these information important to enhance the classification of fallacies? Well, the, hopefully the answer is yes, and I will show it uh, you now how, how it works. So what we did, this, this is the, the kind of uh, the visualization of the architecture. Um, uh, you have uh, the debate is processed into four components. So the dialogue context, which means uh, the, the, the piece of dialogue that we are looking at, the fallacious argument snippet, which means the sentence, which is fallacious. The argumentative components, which are in the dialogue context, and the argumentative relations in the, argument, the dialogue context. They, they could be part of the fallacious argument snippet. They usually are, because, of course, these are fallacious argument snippet are usually uh, an, are, are always an argument component. But then you can have others, which are, uh, for instance, uh, the, 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 fallacy, the fallacy is a claim, and then, of course, you have also evidence supporting this fallacy. Uh, so this is what we did. So this is uh, what uh, how we uh, we we we, date, uh, we, how we build our architecture. Uh, and uh, on the one side, the debate; on the other side, the uh, argumentative uh, components. So these are the results we obtained, which uh, I would say are quite satisfying. Let's say, given the, the complexity of the of, of the task, the task. So if we we take relation and argument, so if we don't, we take just the fallacies, the, just the text and the fallacies and so on. Well, we get uh, 061 of a macro average F1 score. So it's uh, it's not uh, let's say <laughs> very good result. But then if we take into account also the argument components and the relations, and we, uh, we use these uh, features in, in addition, uh, well, if they are combined, they really uh, led to an increase in the, in the, in the performance, which led to uh, 84 uh, of a macro average F F1 score, which is definitely a kind of a good, good result for these six, okay? Of course, we are always talking about these six. If we go into the fine-grained ones, results are, are lower. I, I, I want, uh, I want, to, let's say, sell it uh, as a, the, the perfect solution. So that, 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 that there, the results are, are worse. Here you see the results uh, with respect to each of these, uh, not just the uh, average um, uh, uh, F1 score, but just for the results we got for each of the different classes. So the, the dominant, the appeal to authority. Uh, so you can see that slogans uh, is uh, the one which is uh, um, more difficult uh, to, to, in a way, to be, to be classified. And we have uh, also a false close. Uh, and of course, the best is appeal to emotion and uh, appeal to authority. These are the, the, the best we, we can. So um, to conclude, uh, I uh, I just want to talk some, some minutes about what what uh, what's challenging in all that. So this is a uh, let's say uh, a machine learning approach, uh, and we uh, we completely in a way uh, neglected the, 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 the reasoning part. Okay, um, and this uh, in a way I think is the, the key point to to go on and to 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 make really an improvement on these results because in a way for these. Uh, we are a bit on a, let's say, a kind of a plateau for, for that. We are with good results, uh, but it's difficult, difficult then to improve uh, further. So um, the first thing is that, uh, what are the difficulties? So the difficulty is that often the structure of this fallacious argument is hard to reconstruct, meaning that often you just have um, a lot of antimans uh, in general in these, in these arguments, in the political debates, you just have a lot of uh, a lot of claims, but uh, actually, the, 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 in a way, the premises are implicit; they're anti. So, very difficult to 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 reconstruct all that. And then, in a way, uh, the, the importance of uh, knowledge and not only of uh, 
let's say, uh, the, the pure uh, language model, the importance of knowledge of, of the reasoning is becoming uh, important. So injecting further knowledge would really help a lot in uh, making, in improving this task. To, uh, it could, have, uh, it could, be, could be common sense knowledge, or it could also be specialized knowledge uh, uh, in the domain, for instance, US foreign politics. And, uh, and this reasoning step is, is something we, we really need to, uh, in a way, to, to, to go on. And, and there is another issue, which is uh, another core issue, which is the fact that actually what I presented to you is, okay, look, this is Nixon, he's saying that this is a, 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 a correlation that's causation, uh, fallacious, and, and that's it. Uh, or you can see uh, Trump, uh, I told you, okay, this is a dominant and uh, that's it. Is this just a pure, uh, let's say, single label uh, classification? Because I would say that the Trump sentence could also be an appeal to emotion, okay? Because it's not only a, do a dominant attack towards Bill Clinton, but it's also an appeal to emotion, in particular towards uh, the women in the audience, saying, okay, look at what this uh, Democrat president has done to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to women. Do you really want to vote for them? Okay, so that's, that's, that's very tricky. So this is a difficult part to, to understand because these, uh, these definition of fallacies uh, are very, you know, very shallow. And so it's difficult also to, to see whether there is a precise, a precise boundary between the different uh, classes we can have. That's, that's something we are, we are working on. And finally, we can have uh, complex structures of fallacious arguments. So for instance, you can have uh, for the class uh, false cause post hoc uh, ergo propter hoc, you, you have uh, a statement which does not contain the fallacy of false cause if the candidate explicitly explained the reason why the second event is caused by the first event. But this is difficult to do that, okay? So, uh, for instance, in this example, uh, McCain-Obama, uh, 2008, uh, it says, now we also have to recognize that this is a final verdict in, on eight years of failed economic policies promoted by George Bush, supported by Senator McCain, a theory that basically says that we can shred regulations and consumer predict protections and give more and more to the most and somehow prosperity will tickle down, it hasn't worked. So this is, he, he's explaining why the economic policies of the previous administration, which means of the other, uh, of the, op of the op uh, opponent has not worked, okay? So this, this, is, this is tricky. And this is very difficult uh, for us to, to, to identify that, uh, that, uh, that automatically. And then of course, something we're working on, which is also very challenging, is uh, to, to show how these uh, fallacies evolved over time. Because again, we have the, uh, what's the very nice of this data set is that it's over 50 years. So we should be able to, uh, to in a way, um, make profit of all that. To, uh, to, to, to grasp some more, some more understanding of, uh, of these uh, complex kind of, uh, of arguments. And uh, I conclude here. Thanks a lot for your attention. And of course, this is not uh, just my work. It's the, the joint work with uh, Shore Adadana, who's a PhD student in Luxembourg. Uh, Vorakit Vorakit Fan, who was a PhD student here. Uh, Pier Paolo Grofredo, who is a PhD student uh, here in uh, Nice uh, now, and of course, uh, uh, Elena Cabrio, as usual. Thanks a lot. Merci beaucoup, Serena, pour uh, cette présentation uh, très intéressante. J'imagine qu'il va y avoir uh, pas mal de questions.